Yeah, what's up? Name's Jet Leon One, and I kept you waiting, huh? It's been a hot minute, but finally, we're gonna get to it. Let's play play through game through awesome through childhood through 33 Kingdom Hearts. Oh man, you can just usually I like to give the spiel it's like, oh, this game means a lot to me. I like this game, but this is one of those games that means a lot to not just me, but to a lot of people. So you can imagine how a kid with a PS2 and about three games for it felt when this was one of them. And man, I'm just happy to get to play this again. I love this game, and hopefully I can show you just how much I love it and just why. But I'm about to shut up, because this intro... Oh man, this is the stuff of legends. I sure hope you like mind-bending visuals and J-pop, because you're about to get a prime example of both. I've been having these weird thoughts lately. Like, is any of this for real? Or not? Just amazing. I mean, didn't you understand every little bit of it? No, but you did like Simple and Clean, didn't you? It's so good. Such a good way to just start a game off. Just dump you in. So much to do, so little time. Take your time. Don't be afraid. The door is still shut. Now, step forward. Can you do it? And then the game just pops in because we're on an HD version. We're not on the most HD of versions. I don't have a PS4 yet, but the PS3 version will do. Left stick to move, tilt slightly to walk, all the way to run. Then we've got to move forward into this beam of light. Nice and simple. Power sleeps within you. If you give it form, it will give you strength. And here we get into one of the most interesting things about this game. Choose well. Uh, not only is this game uh, pretty decently short compared to most JRPGs. The other thing that makes it super replayable is this. At the beginning, you are offered a choice between a shield, a sword, and a staff. Whichever one you pick determines the order you get your uh, passive and active abilities in. It doesn't control magic or your stats. Uh, it controls your starting stats, but not the stats you gain. It just controls the order you get skills in. And uh, there's a lot of different choices, but I'm going to go with what works, because I've always picked this one even though it's not the most optimal. The power of the warrior, invincible courage, a sword of terrible destruction. Is this the power you seek? Yes. Your path is set. And I guess I should explain, the skill order you get is basically, you can imagine how it is based on what you pick. The sword gives you offensive abilities, the staff gives you more uh, magic boosting abilities, and the shield gives you more defensive recovery abilities. And uh, now is the other thing, is that Half of your choice is what you want to get a boost to, so for picking the sword, I'm going to have better physical attacks. I'll start with more strength, and I'll get more offensive options, but now I have to sacrifice a stat. And uh, the other thing is that I had to look this up beforehand, but depending on what you pick and what you give up, it also affects not just your uh, attack, magic, and defense stats, but also the amount of items you can carry on you and the amount of ability of points you start with. Uh, which also indirectly affects the maximum amount of ability points you have. So, my choice is not optimal, but this is what I've always run with. The power of the Mystic. Inner Strength. A Staff of Wonder and Ruin. Ah, we don't need that. We'll just beat up all of our problems. I give up the power of magic. You've chosen the power of the warrior. You've given up the power of the Mystic. It's a bit of a rough path, but this is the form I choose. Uh, just for reference, for playing along for yourself, technically the best one is pick shield, give up sword, because that way you get the most items and most ability points. And you lose out on uh, strength, but strength you can get, there are items you can get, and you get plenty from your stats. So, it's not like it's a big loss, but since this is a let's play and I can't new game plus cheat it like I've been doing with all the other RPGs that I've recorded, uh, I want to make sure that things are the easiest they can be and picking the path I've always picked that I know I can beat the game with is probably for the best. You've gained the power to fight. 
Also, whatever weapon you pick there at the beginning is what you'll have right now. So if you pick the shield, you have the shield. If you pick the staff, you have the staff. But I feel like the sword is the most fitting. Alright, you've got it. Use this power to protect yourself and others. Green gauge is HP. If you lose all of it, you lose. Blue gauge is magic. Once you get spells, each one will cost a certain amount of the full boxes. Hitting things restores your MP, as well as there being items in enemy drops that will restore both. There will be times you have to fight. Keep your light burning strong. So here we have our first enemies, the shadows. And right now the combat's really basic. We can only mash X for our attack because we don't have anything else. But it gets pretty fancy later. You gain experience by defeating enemies. With enough experience, you gain a level. Levels make you stronger, and they give you stats and abilities. Uh, the abilities they give you are depending on which weapon you pick. Like I said, you get basically... I say tree, but it just determines which order you get things. Furthermore, defeated enemies sometimes leave item behind. You can take these items by walking up to them. Different items do different things. So yeah, there's green balls for HP, blue bubbles for magic, uh, little yellow crystal diamond things for your money, and then boxes for items. Behind you. And then this game, uh, even though it was pretty early, PS2, like mid-early PS2, uh, the camera controls are pretty solid. In order to make sure it's pretty easy for everybody to play, you will auto-target your nearest enemy and then you can lock on to specific enemies. And uh, locking on limits the available actions you can take. You can't, like, turn or anything. It's like, I can kind of choose what direction I want to swing whenever I'm just attacking normally. Like, I can kind of just... You know, he auto-turns even if it's just an auto-target. But yeah, locking on limits how you move and you will only swing towards the specific end you can't tilt it even a little bit. And we thought we defeated the darkness. But it's not that easy. Here we are in a yet another area. This place is weird, huh? But I love this intro. It's just... It's so simple and weird. It just sells you right away. Because, like, we're just here in the middle of this void, just fighting enemies. Somebody's talking to us. We don't even know our own name yet. Like, it's just... It just throws you in. And it's so mysterious and cool, and I love it. And a new feature they backported into this game for the HD versions is triangle is going to be your action sensitive button. So if you want to open a door, open a box, talk to somebody, you hit triangle. It used to cover up your attack option, but now it's just triangle. I can't open it. Now there's more light. So yeah, triangle changes depending on what you want to do. Okay. I opened a chest and it gave me a box. And you can push large crates. It's not really important information. It's usable sometimes. Uh, there's like some platforming and stuff you can do by putting a box in the right spot and jumping on it. So sometimes destroying an object yields items. You can use them with the items command. So that was a bit funny because I activated two tutorials at once by accidentally picking up the uh, box. You can lock on to objects as well as enemies. While locked on, press L2 to switch your focus between available targets. Which, it's kind of weird that it's not R2, so that way it's on uh, both sides, or the same side of the controller for both camera options. But okay, destroying a barrel created a door. Man, don't you just love physics? It makes sense. Hold on, the door won't open just yet. First, tell me more about yourself. So here we are in an entirely different place. And here's a button we're never going to use again. You can press select to go first person, but it's like, that's not helpful. It doesn't do anything. So here we are with our second set of choices. These kids, they're references to other uh, Final Fantasy games. Because in case you didn't know already, this is a collaboration between Disney and Square Enix. Or I think it was just Square at this point. But here we have Titus and Waka from Final Fantasy X, and then we have Selfie from Final Fantasy VIII. 
and they're going to be asking us about ourselves. Talk command is available just like I said. What are you so afraid of? And here is the second important choice in the game. Your first choice was your skill set and your starting stats. And in here, uh, it's a bit odd, but depending on which uh, answers to these questions you give, it determines how fast you level up. Picking mostly top, ex uh, top choices will make you level up really fast for your first half of your levels 1 to 50, and then the second half 51 to 99 you level up slow. If you pick mostly middle options, uh, everything will be even across all of it, so your level ups will be evenly spaced and it won't be any problem to get from beginning to end, it'll all be equal. If you pick mostly bottom options, uh, you get the really weird choice that I don't know why anyone would pick, where you level up slow for the first 50 levels and then level up fast for the later ones. It just strikes me as weird because it's like, it makes it so slow to get through the game because I have a save file from when I beat it and I'm going to be going with the fast ones because what that save file told me is that I was level 51 when I beat the game so if I pick fast leveling I will be able to skip a lot of grinding to make the LP go by faster and I'll be right at the point where it slows down is where I beat the game anyways so we'll go with that but like I don't know why you would want to level up slow even if you're going for like the super end game stuff and you want to get to 99 picking even would be better so that way you can actually make it through the uh, game proper without grinding and then you just have a regular amount of grinding at the end I don't know. So yeah, we'll just pick all top, option, top options here to make sure we get fast leveling. Getting old, is that really so scary? I mean, yeah. Inevitability scares everyone. What do you want out of life? I want to see rare sights. See things no one's ever seen before. Be a true adventurer. And last but not least, what's most important to you? Being number one. If I can see all these things no one else has, it'll make me a hero. It'll make me a legend. You're afraid of getting old. You want to see rare sights. You want to be number one. You want to be the strongest before you can't anymore. Your adventure begins at dawn. So yeah, dawn, midday, and dusk are your leveling speeds. Sounds good. We're going to level up fast. The day you open the door is both far off and very near. The battle music kicks in. It's time for things to get serious. We've picked our level ups, and we've picked our level up speed. Let's start getting some. Press the start menu to open the menu screen. In the menu, you can do things like view your inventory and status, or configure your game settings. However, you can't open the menu during battle. So I'll show that in a second, because first, we've got more shadows to deal with. Which actually, now that I think about it, I wonder how the XP you get from the first few shadows works with your leveling speed. Alright. So here we're going to get to see all... Come on. Okay, I need to reposition. Yeah, I'm kind of sad there. I wanted to show something off. Because uh, there were several failed recordings of this. Because, you know, you got to fail the first recording of Let's Play. Just to make sure you know how you want to start things off. But uh, when I did it the first time, the, when they all jumped at the beginning and piled up, I managed to cleave like six of them at once. Because one cool thing about this game is that even your basic attacks, they all cleave. So wherever you see that trail of light, like whenever he does the horizontal swing, everything it passes through gets damaged. You don't only damage the one enemy. So you have some passive crowd control going on, in addition to actual crowd control that you'll get later. Which is really nice. Also, um, I'll, I can probably point it out in the next battle. But in that one battle, there was like a flash of light because I bounced an attack off an enemy's attack. That's called the tech point. So like if you attack an enemy at the same time as they attack you, you can bounce their attack and defend yourself. But it will also give you an XP point. And there's a lot of tech points where it's basically you either uh, defended yourself by like blocking an attack with your own attack or you knock something back to an enemy for a counter attack. And they all give you XP and they're all beneficial. So if you can figure any out, go for them. Also, I think this unlocks the menu. Oh well. This is a save point. Touching a save point heals you to full. And then you can save. And uh, I forget if the original did this, but this game is quite nice, especially for people recording, because you have 99 save slots. So one of them's taken by the slot to beat the game, but I'm going to be recording, or I'm going to be saving frequently, because even if a recording fails, I can just go back to a rotated save. So there's from the failed files. Hashtag whoops. But we're getting through it faster, because that's why you want to fail the recordings when you start a Let's Play. 
because then you can shave two minutes off by not being an idiot. And here I press start, uh, but if you press start before they tell you about the menu, you would have just paused it. So whenever you can't use the menu like in battle, it just says pause and it just stops time to let you catch your breath and think. So here's your main menu. We have items. We picked up a potion. Uh, in order to use items in battle, you have to equip them to your slots. And uh, I think I mentioned it, but depending on what you pick between the sword, shield, and staff, uh, whatever your combination also affects how many items you can carry into battle at maximum. And then stock is your spare items. You can use them outside of battle, so if there's like a potion and you're mildly wounded, you can just use it instead of using one that you have equipped. Uh, here's your equipment. You get a weapon. You only get one weapon. And then these will be accessory slots, although it's mostly air quotes accessories because it functions a lot like armor. They give defense and they give various other stat boosts. They're very good and you can equip more than two going later uh, once you get, I think it's an item that boosts it, that or level ups unlock more slots. Abilities is uh, what picking your weapon at the beginning determines. It determines the order you get these. Uh, you spend ability points in order to equip passives and then like active abilities such as getting extra hits in your combos, getting fancy finishers on the last hit of your combo, or getting uh, new abilities that you can use. Then customize. Uh, this is where you get to set, if we had spells, uh, we could set uh, quick options to it. Let me see. Yeah, we could basically set, I think it's if you hold R2, no, L1. If you hold L1 and hit a button, it'll quick cast whatever you have in that. So your three most used spells will go there. And then also, whenever we get party members, because of course, having Sora go it alone wouldn't be fair, would it? Uh, you get to customize basically their action triggers. Like, how wounded do you have to be before they heal, or how often will they use attack magic or attack abilities, things like that. Status lets you check your stats, and because I picked the sword at the beginning, with our first level up there, we have 8 strength, so we hit pretty hard. But when we get magic, oh boy, it's not going to be very good. And then let me just fix this camera x-axis is fixed so now when I hit right it circles right I love it I don't like when games start going the opposite direction but anyways that's enough about the menu we've got an adventure to continue and here we have this just really cool staircase going up and I just want to take a moment and just check it like this area is so cool like I know it's probably due to engine limitations and PS2 limitations or whatnot but just the sheer stark contrast of oh I'd never noticed that the platform disappears when you walk up and that's even cooler but like just the contrast of being in this dark void and then you have these lighted platforms and there's absolutely nothing else here. Just you, the enemies, and whatever's going on. It's such a strong beginning and I love it. The closer you get to light, the greater your shadow becomes. But don't be afraid. Crossing fate. So here we have our first boss. This is Dark Side. So here we're gonna learn a bit more about how the game works. So to attack Dark Side, just hitting it doesn't do anything. You have to specifically attack the hand so you can lock onto it. And then to defend itself, it'll slam into the ground and summon little shadows. Although they're mostly helpful to you because they give you they do scratch damage, but they're giving you XP, and they drop uh, HP orbs, so you can make sure you stay topped off in case you get hit by anything. Let's just deal with these. See, that was the tech that I was talking about. We clashed from each other's attacks. And here we're going to have an even better example of tech. Damage. If you attack that, you're not back at him. So defending it gives you a point, and then hitting it deals damage to it and gives you 2 XP. Look, we leveled up in the middle of a battle. That's great, so now our defense is higher for the rest of the battle. But I failed to block the triple. The triple's pretty hard. So yeah, we can just jump up here and swing. Okay, this one's too high. But yeah, let's see, the other one maybe. We need to be out of the way of that. We don't want to be in that position. That'll hurt. But yeah, dark side's pretty simple, but it gives you an opportunity to learn about reflecting projectiles, dealing with crowds and little things, and dealing with larger enemies. So let's go ahead and knock this light shadow out. If we can. Nope. That's 
it, we beat a boss. Aren't we great? Who do you think you're kidding? This is the tutorial. But don't be afraid. You hold the mightiest weapon of all. So don't forget. You are the one who will open the door. Wasn't that fun? I love that tutorial zone. It's just, it's so cool. It's so weird. But it explains quite a bit, really succinctly. Even if you don't like text box tutorials, I feel that it's just cool enough on its own that you can look past it. Whoa! <laughs> Give me a break, Kyrie. Sorry, you lazy bum. I knew that I'd find you snoozing down here. No, this huge black thing swallowed me up. I couldn't breathe, I couldn't... Ow! Are you still dreaming? It wasn't a dream. Or was it? I don't know. What was that place? So bizarre. Yes, yeah, sure. Say, Kyrie, what was your hometown like? You know, where you grew up? I've told you before, I don't remember. Nothing at all? Nothing. You ever want to go back? Hmm, well, I'm happy here. Really? But you know, I wouldn't mind going to see it. I'd like to see it too. Along with any other worlds out there. I want to see them all. So what are we waiting for? Hey! Aren't you guys forgetting about me? So... I guess I'm the only one working on the raft. <laughs> and you're just as lazy as he is. <laughs> so you know this. Okay, we'll finish it together. I'll race you. Huh? What? Are you kidding? <laughs> Ready? Go! That's your intro. Welcome to Kingdom Hearts. And just so you don't forget, here's our first world of many. Welcome to the Destiny Islands. I know it didn't have a name before, but that area we were in for the tutorial is called Awakening. You don't need to know that, it's just cool. Alright, then they just dump us in. We don't even have to talk to Kyrie right away. So yeah, here we have Sora, there's Kyrie, and our friend Riku is off somewhere. But we'll talk more about them next time. I think that tutorial was enough to get the beginning covered. So hopefully you enjoyed this first episode. It took me a lot of retakes and a lot of time, but we got it done. And in the next one, we're going to go explore Destiny Island and get this game started proper. So this has been Jet Leon 1, and I'll see you then.